All right, on this one, we're going to take a quick look into texture paint here inside Blender. Uh, I'm going to be using some stencils here to show a little bit of the workflow. And in order for that to work, you need to load your stencil image like I'm doing now over in the texture slot on the side before you'll be able to see it uh, in texture paint. So here I've just jumped over to texture paint and now I'm selecting the add paint slot and your dimensions. You want your final output texture dimensions here. So I'm doing 4K. I'm also going to change that color uh, because it's going to make your initial texture this starting color and I didn't want it to be a complete black. So there you can see that it's applied that texture, that paint slot texture to our piece of the panel. And here I'm selecting my my uh, stencil texture and then I'm changing it to a stencil. You can then grab it with the right mouse button and uh, move it around the screen to where you're going to use it and then uh, scaling it to size. Now this is just a uh, free carbon fiber texture that I got off, a lot, off of uh, the internet. Now because it was free it's not the best texture and you'll see that um, it was supposed to be tileable but uh, you'll see that I end up redoing things multiple times because it didn't tile properly and I had to kind of fight with that a little bit. But as you can see with that uh, stencil there, you can just paint directly on your model here in Blender. And uh, I'll open up a UV image editor here in, in a minute and uh, show you what it's doing. But uh, what Blender is doing here is, is taking this information that you paint onto your 3D model and it's painting that information onto a texture image. So here I'm just trying to find some different settings to uh, help change the fact that you can see a really obvious seam uh, in my texture and, and I end up just undoing all of this and, and uh, rotating the texture a few different times until I found a way to kind of blend my uh, seams in there. Another thing to note is uh, the brush setting is not uh, default at full 100% and so um, if you're trying to stencil something like this and it's only at like 70% then your texture isn't going to come through quite as dark as you expected with the first stroke and that's something that I had to adjust so that it was fully painting that texture on there. It just takes a lot of uh, trial and error to get your textures to lay out just right. Now if I was doing something other than this uh, carbon fiber pattern it probably would have been um, quicker and easier uh, but with such a distinct pattern it, it made seems very obvious. But you can do this with uh, just about any, any image you want or if you uh, don't want an image, you just want a color, then you don't even need to use a texture. You can, you can just paint right here in Blender with, with a color picker and just uh, paint your lines or your shadows or details and, and such. Another thing you could do uh, is using a texture but not using it as a stencil like I'm doing here, but having like a grunge texture or some kind of dirt texture and using that to paint in um, some different details as well. And as you can see it's just a lot of uh, trial and error so I decided to move my texture over so it'll it'll paint on anything that it sees that is part of that object so you'll notice that it's not painting on all all the other pieces that are blue and that's because I'm in just this one specific object at the moment. That uh, can either be used as an advantage or it can sometimes be a little 
frustrating because you have to go in and out of individual objects to paint your uh, details on. But in this case it's actually quite helpful because I only wanted these particular panels to be this uh, carbon fiber texture and so I didn't have to be terribly careful uh, with how I painted. Also a thing to note here is that it, it uh, is painting from the view that you're looking at. So that's why I have to rotate the model so that we're painting straight on that face um, because it's painting sh straight through that view that you see. It doesn't uh, adapt for the angle of the face that you're painting on. And then it also doesn't wrap around corners so here now I'm trying to um, get the edges that you don't see from the front view but you can see from the top or the side view and so I'm just trying to get some texture quickly onto that. So here you see the uh, image that it's been painting on and you can see that it's showing um, all that carbon fiber texture that we've been painting and, and trying to do that in, in a uh, image editor would have been rather difficult but because we're able to do it here in 3D it works out pretty smooth. Now I'm opening up another uh, PNG texture that I created with all the text in it that uh, exists in this cockpit and I'm going to now use that text to put in all of the different decals and, and uh, labels that are in our cockpit and just pull up a few quick uh, reference images and then I uh, can lay out so this has all the individual text pieces and I'm just finding the specific one I need for what I'm working on right now and then uh, and then you can just paint in that individual little bit. And this is a super handy thing even if uh, even if you're going to go back in and, and use an image editor later to tweak things you're going to want to um, do this first just because it helps you figure out that uh, figure out that layout And here you can see that it's uh, put that text over there on our texture image. So now I've gone back into object mode and I'm selecting these switches so that we can throw some uh, text on those real quick as well. And that's one thing that uh, working with texture paint in Blender is you do have to jump uh, in and out from object to object you can't uh, paint on all all of them that are in your scene at once um, which is is uh, frustrating at some times and, and helpful um, for others but uh, here you can see how quick it is and, and easy to just throw some text on these switches and uh, one thing to note here is, is again, it's it's painting through uh, the angle that you're looking at. So you want to make sure that you rotate your object so that you're uh, painting flat on that face. Otherwise, your uh, texture is going to look a little bit stretched. But just like that, you can see it's gone ahead and painted that into our our texture image and uh, so then I jump back out to object mode, select my next 
uh, switch and then I'm right back in to go ahead and paint on uh, that switch as well. So just like that, uh, you can get a lot of detail painted under your 3D model rather quickly. And then uh, one important thing to note is don't forget to save your image. Uh, that's one thing Blender doesn't save this image. So right here you'll see me save that image because even if you save your Blender file, Blender's not going to save um, that image. But if you remember to save it, uh, you'll be able to apply it to your model and uh, then see it in the sim.